Hello, my name is Ashley Burke. I am going to be talking with you a little bit about um, some things about marriage here in a little bit, but first they've asked me for this website to kind of share my story before I get into what I do and don't know about marriage. My story, um, the same as a lot of people's. I, I fell in love in college, got married, started having a family, and after my fifth child was born, started wondering what was going wrong in my marriage. We seemed to have a really good marriage before that. We would spend most of our time vacationing and we had no money. So vacationing meant we hopped from house to house of different relatives over our break in college. And that was the perfect life for me at that time. I loved taking my babies to show them off. And um, so we had, we had a lot of good times, but all of a sudden in, in 2011, there was just, struggles and I really didn't have answers to them and I searched and searched like any normal crazy person does when they feel like their marriage is having issues and I didn't find any answers until one night um, it was March 11th of 2011 I got a knock at my door um, and the detectives at the door came in and sat me on my couch to tell me that my husband was not only having an affair with our paralegal who worked for us at our law office but the paralegal's husband had come and um, in a moment of rage, decided to shoot two bullets into my husband, one in the forehead and one in the heart. And, um, you know, I, I know we all say like these moments of crossroads, that moment when I came, a lot of people's crossroads kind of exploded in my face and I came to a crossroad of who I wanted to be. I was filled with a lot of doubt, a lot of fear, a lot of beliefs that weren't true. And I kind of waited, I pretended everything was okay, I put on my high heels and we carried on, me and these five kids, and I remarried, and we waited for a murder trial. It just kept getting pushed off and pushed off. And then the murder trial came and went and I realized I was still broken, I was still insecure, the most insecure human I've ever met. And I shamed myself for being so insecure. So marriage to me, I, I like to break it down, sometimes, the first time someone asked me to go speak after my blog and I started doing conferences and wrote a few books about these exact things, someone asked me to come speak and I felt really inadequate because I don't feel like any sort of a marriage expert clearly. My story proves that things went very badly wrong. But one thing I've learned more recently is it wasn't my fault. And that has been the most empowering. I um. Someone asked me in an interview months ago, out of Dateline, Dr. Phil, all these things you've done with your story, what is the greatest accomplishment in your eyes? And I seriously sat there thinking for a while. And I was like, you know what? My greatest accomplishment is finding my worth because I didn't have any. That night on The Detectives, I opened myself to all these new concepts of who I thought I was and who I thought other people thought I was. And my greatest accomplishment over these last six years is getting rid of all of those and finding out who I am, finding out that my relationship with my creator is what makes me me. Not any man, which I love my new husband, Sean, and we've had our own bumps in the roads. Um, so I would say my greatest marriage advice to you people who are, are at this website looking for hope in your marriage. Number one, we can't be selfish. We can't. And it's really hard, especially when you're a victim of somebody else's choices to just become selfish, thinking that you've earned some badge that says, you know what, I've been victimized. I can have a freak out. If I see a cute girl pass, I'm gonna be insecure and you're just gonna have to deal with it. That's one way of doing it and I've tried that way. And I promise you, it doesn't work. It's not anybody else's job to make you secure, it's yours. So find out who you are. Ask God what truths did he send you with to this earth that you can use right now in your relationships, especially if you've been, you've been the victim of infidelity. I want you to just transfer over that word victim because victim, victimhood gets us nowhere. And start to look at yourself as a survivor. You maybe have a new marriage and it's hard as hell. Trust me, I know. My husband had infidelity in his marriage. I had infidelity in mine. Trying to bring together two broken people is sometimes impossible because when he's not insecure, I'm insecure. But those insecurities that we think are helping us 
I mean, there was one day we were at a water park and I was so insecure. I literally, any cute girl I saw, I would look at my husband to make sure he wasn't looking at her. And sometimes it looked like he was. And I was getting so worked up and I almost wanted to be like, you know what, let's just go home. I'm sitting here, I'm wearing a bikini, which I don't like to do, but you wanted me to do it. And I already feel insecure and I just keep, and I wanted to drill him on what he should be for me so I could feel good about myself. And it hit me, we were walking up, we were in Florida. We were walking up this mountain at some Disney resort water park thing. And I looked up for a second and I was like, oh my gosh, this isn't stopping my fear from happening, it's making more. Living off my fear all the time is just causing more fear to happen. And I said this little prayer and I was like, you know what, Heavenly Father, he's your son. He already has a savior, he doesn't need me, and I'm so tired of living my life as if I make all the difference. It was a really humbling moment. But it's a concept that I've tried to apply more and more. You know, we all feel insecure at some point, but in our marriages, that's the one place where we've got to let go of that fear, or else it's the thing stopping us from having the healthy marriage that we really want. So that would be my first advice. Figure out what it is. I, uh, with an actual prisoner in my story, this quote has become one that really touches my heart. And it says, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and realize that the prisoner was you. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and realize that the prisoner was you. Sometimes we wanna hold our spouse prisoner or someone that we need to forgive, but really we're the prisoner. When we're so wrapped up in hate or fear or those things that prisoners have victimized us to feel, we're not seeing other people. So my other advice, pray to see your spouse as God sees them. Pray to see yourself first because you can't see anybody else until you see yourself how God wants you to see yourself. And then start praying to see them how God sees them. And I, I sometimes have wished that I could go back to that story to see what difference I could have made before all of those decisions, but I can't. But I do know this, I wasn't the person that failed that marriage, but I have failed myself because of the incidents that took, that came to be my story. I failed myself so many times. But I knew after all of that happened that I wanted to do marriage again and I have, I've given, it a, I've given it a try and I fight every single day because I believe with all my heart that even though things can go wrong, marriage is worth all the sacrifices and all the efforts that we have to make to make it a strong one. Blending a family, all those things you guys are dealing with, they're hard, they're really hard. So whatever your story is, first of all, I need you to embrace it. For yourself. I need you to start loving yourself and I need you to start praying to see your spouse, your significant other, how God sees them. Those are the answers that I came up with today as I'm sitting here thinking, what, what marriage advice do I have? I have a lot of don't do this, but for the most part, I want you to focus on the things that you can do. Every morning I write in my journal a letter to to Heavenly Father. And I tell him some of the struggles we're having, I tell him some of the triumphs that I'm finding. And then I, I do this fun thing that I have him write me back. And there's been so many times, I know not all of you deal with PTSD, but I have a lot of PTSD associated with infidelity and, and the marriage things that happened to me in my past and fears. Um, but he would, when I would try to get inspiration to write back, what would Heavenly Father say? If, if Christ was sitting in the room with me right now, what would he say to me today? And sometimes, actually all the time, it's pretty simple stuff. Sometimes he's known that I'm struggling with cooking because that was kind of one of my triggers for a long time. And he would say, make spaghetti. And I'd write it down. And that day I just had a plan and I made spaghetti. And other days he says, slow down and see your spouse. He feels alone because you're, you're just marching over here and he's over here and I would slow down. So those answers that we think we're, we're gonna get from videos like this, maybe you're gonna find something in here, maybe not. But the, the one thing I want you to do is find the answers that you need from God. He's the only source of truth for you. I can't give you the advice for your story. Your story's gonna be unique. Even if you're going down a path that seems really familiar to some other story you've heard, 
The advice that I give and what worked for me isn't going to be the answer for you necessarily, but the answer always will come if we ask the right source. And I believe in my life through that whole crazy hell that I went through and through the blending family that I'm going through now, every time I ask God, he has an answer for me and he has not given up on me, even though sometimes I feel like the world did. And he has not failed me, even though almost every day for a long time, I thought so many people did. He is my source. So that's my greatest marriage advice. See yourself and see your spouse, how God sees you and everything will be okay. Put away the selfishness and the pride and the fear and find empathy and faith and hope that tomorrow you're going to be better than you are today. Quit waiting around for somebody else to be better. You get to choose what your life is gonna be and it starts with you.